In this video, we're going to learn about the gas laws. The gas laws are relationships between uh, different variables we use to describe gases. And these are the four that we're going to take a look at with the gas laws. We have uh, pressure, and pressure is generally measured in kilopascals. And then we have volume, which is generally measured in liters, and temperature, which is generally measured in units of Kelvin, and then finally the amount of a gas, and that's generally measured in moles. The gas laws we're going to learn are going to be Boyle's Law, Charles Law, Gay-Lussac's Law, Avogadro's Law, and the Combined Gas Law. Now each of these gas laws takes on a few different forms mathematically, and we're going to use a form that's going to relate an initial set of conditions to a change set of conditions. And each of the laws is going to uh, compare two variables, uh, except for the combined gas law. All the other ones will just look at two of those variables we mentioned right up here uh, at a time, and the other ones will remain constant. So let's start with Boyle's law. Uh, Boyle's law relates pressure and volume. And it was published by Robert Boyle in the late 1600s. Boyle said that when the pressure of a gas increases, the volume of a gas decreases, uh, as long as the temperature and the amount of gas are held constant. So if you can imagine, in this container, this first one right here, we just had a bunch of gas particles, uh, and this little bit of weight right here was being suspended by those gas particles. And so if we increase the weight to increase the pressure over here in the second one so if we added a whole bunch more weight on top we would decrease the volume because the pressure went up and so the volume would go down now mathematically uh, the relationship will be inverse and so we could say that pressure is going to be proportional to the inverse of the volume and this is just a fancy way to say as pressure goes up volume goes down. Now when we're looking at a problem, we're going to solve this problem in a minute, we're going to use the mathematical relationship for Boyle's Law that's going to compare an initial set of conditions to a change set of conditions. And so here's how that equation would look. This left side of the equation represents the initial set of conditions, and so I have an initial pressure, I'm calling that P1, an initial volume, calling that V1, and then over here is our change set of conditions. So the pressure, the new pressure will be P2, and the new volume will be V2. So what we're going to do uh, in this problem is we'll read through it, and we'll underline the information that is given to us, and then underline what the question is asking for. It says that a balloon is filled with helium to a volume of 13.6 liters at a pressure of 101 kilopascals. If the pressure is decreased to 35 kilopascals, what is the new volume? And we can see assumed temperature is constant. So I can see that there's an initial set of conditions. The balloon is filled with helium to an initial volume, that's V1 and an initial pressure, that's right here, 101 kilopascals, that's P1. And then we change it, we decrease the pressure, this is P2, and we're going to solve for V2. What I like to do is list all of the data that I have and assign it the correct variable before I start solving the problem. And so here is all the information listed, and I'm going to use this equation right here. I'm going to solve for uh, V2, that's what I'm solving for. So I'm going to rearrange the equation by dividing both sides by P2. It's going to cancel P2 on this side and move it over here. And I'll rewrite that down here. So I have V2 is equal to P1 times V1 over P2. So we'll go ahead and plug in all of our known information. And it's just a matter of plugging this into our calculator and we'll end up with a new volume of 39.2 liters. And so that is Boyle's Law. Let's move on to Charles' Law. Uh, Charles' Law is going to relate volume and temperature. And this law was formulated by Jacques Charles. He was a French chemist. Uh, and this was in the late 1700s. Uh, Charles said that as the temperature of a gas increases, the volume of the gas will also increase. And that's if pressure and amount of gas are held constant. Now, this is a direct relationship. And uh, don't try this at home, but this is the example I, I thought of here. If you were to accidentally take your cooking spray 
and set that onto a hot burner, the temperature of the gas inside would start going up. And as the temperature increased, the gas would start expanding, attempting to increase the volume of a container. Now, eventually, uh, it would rupture the can and uh, that allow for that increase in volume. Now, mathematically, this relationship would look like this. P is uh, proportional to V, or in other words, a direct relationship. So as pressure increases, volume increases. If we were comparing or looking at a, a problem here, and we're comparing an initial set of conditions to a uh, change set of conditions, the equation would look like this. And so we have our initial set of conditions here of an initial volume and temperature and a change volume and temperature. So let's solve this problem. And we'll do this the same way as Boyle's Law. I'm going to read through it and underline the given information. It says, calculate the volume of 23.4 liters of air if the temperature was increased from 298 Kelvin to 355 Kelvin. And we're solving for volume in this case. I'm going to go ahead and list the information that I know. So I know the initial volume, what it started at here, that's V1. And I know that the temperature started at 298, that's my T1, and it increased to 355, so that's T2. And so I'm solving for V2. I'm going to rearrange this equation that I have up here by moving T2 up to the other side. And I'm going to end up with V1 times T2 over T1 is going to be equal to V2. So now I can plug in all of my known data. And I'll end up with a new volume uh, that's equal to 27.9 liters. And so that's Charles' Law. The next one is called Avogadro's Law. And uh, this is going to relate the amount of gas and volume. And this law was formulated by Amadeo Avogadro, who uh, formulated this in the early 1800s. And the law is probably the most intuitive of the gas laws. It says that as you increase the amount of a gas, the volume of a gas will also increase. And so it's just as you blow more air into a balloon, the balloon will get bigger and bigger and bigger. Now, mathematically, the relationship uh, is going to be a direct relationship. So uh, mo number of moles of gas is going to be uh, increasing. That means the volume will also be increasing. So let's look at an example of a problem once again. And we'll start off with that equation that relates a initial set of conditions to a change set of conditions. So uh, we have our volumes and our amounts. And we use the letter N to signify number of moles. Let's read this problem and I'll underline once again, the given information says a balloon is filled with 0.34 moles of air to a volume of 7.6 liters. What will the volume be if the amount of air is increased to one mole? Let's go ahead and list the data. And then we can rearrange this equation by moving N2 up. And we'll get V1 times N2 over N1 be equal to V2. I can go ahead and plug in my known information. And we end up with a new volume that's equal to 22.4 liters. All right, one last law, and it is called the combined gas law. And this law is going to actually combine Boyle's law, Charles' law, and Galo Sachs' law. So it looks at pressure, volume, and temperature. And so this is what the equation looks like, and this allows for actually two things to change. In the previous problems, uh, only one variable was changing, and we're calculating another variable. Uh, in this problem, we're actually going to have two of the variables change. So let's read it. It says, a weather balloon is filled with helium to a volume of 84.6 liters at 25 degrees Celsius and 101 kilopascals. If the balloon rises to an altitude where the pressure is reduced to 30 kilopascals and the temperature is negative 45 degrees Celsius, what is the new volume? I'm going to go ahead and list all of that known data. And there's everything there. What I, what I need to do is check all the SI units, make sure everything's in standard units. I didn't have to do that before, but in this one, I'm mentioning that because I've given tem I'm given temperatures in Celsius, and so I need those in Kelvin. What you do is just add 273. Uh, 
whenever you're given Celsius, and that converts it into Kelvin. And so we end up with 298 Kelvin as our initial temperature and 228 as our uh, change temperature. All right, let's take a look at the equation and rearrange it. Uh, what's going to happen is I'm going to need to move this T2. I'll move it up here, get it over to the other side. And the P2, I'll move down here, move it to the other side. And now I can go ahead and plug in all that known information. And we get a new volume that's equal to 200 and 18 liters. All right, five laws, all the gas laws relating pressure, volume, temperature, and the amount of gas.